There are many ancient ruins within Crimea which carry all the hallmarks of a lost civilization. The Royal Kurgan, an extraordinary structure which has stonework indicative of this civilization, whose work spans the continents and is found detailed into such ruins as that of Baalbek or that of Wary within Peru. However, the discovery which we are sharing within this video is unlikely to be shared within academic circles or indeed within any of their widely dispersed printed formats. Found near a beach, within what at first appears to be a naturally formed cliff face, is soon revealed to be an entirely artificially worked rock face. Within the narrow openings is revealed quarried caverns of significant size. Once excavated, long ago within our past, yet displaying tool marks unquestionably left by advanced technology. Modern quarries, for example, would incorporate giant circular saws attached to machines to liberate stones of this scale, leaving similar scars within the rock. How an ancient civilization undertook these feats is a complete mystery. However, the grooves left within these scars rapidly change depth from inch to inch, as if the cut was made by an energy beam. They are also incredibly thin in some areas, something we only can achieve with water jets or laser beams. It does, however, reveal where the stone possibly came from to create the ancient structures also throughout Crimea, which also escape current explanation. These tool marks can not only be found within Crimea, they have now been identified the world over. The basalt floor of Giza, the many unfinished obelisks, the ruins of India, all display this incredible ability to manipulate and shape rock. We feel the evidence for at least one advanced civilization still lost within our past is now overwhelming. Who cut these incredible quarries? How did they cut this stone from the bedrock? What tools did they use? Is this proof that there was advanced technology long ago here on Earth, one that has been all but lost to entropy? What happened to this civilization? What other things did they achieve yet to be revealed? These are all questions, and indeed journeys of discovery, which we find highly compelling. The Royal Kurgan – undoubtedly an astonishing, highly unusual ancient structure. One of many such structures found within the local area, yet the Royal Kurgan the most impressive by far. Found within eastern Crimea, this incredible building, predictably, like many other miraculous, possibly pre-cataclysmic, as yet unexplained ruins, which we so often cover on our channel, not only possesses features strongly indicative of a culture far predating the current academically attested constructors, but this impressive structure, like the many of the other structural relics found throughout the world, is claimed as a mere tomb. We hypothesize this is due to their inexplicable nature, revered by our more recent ancestors, and as such, selected burial locations for rulers of these more modern, well-studied residents of the area. With the Royal Kurgan being no exception. According to academic study, it was apparently created with the sole purpose of being that of a tomb, constructed for the ruler of the Bosphoran Kingdom within the 5th century BC. We postulate, however, that these structures were merely reused as tombs, subsequently becoming locations of worship for these once powerful individuals. Our claim that the Kurgan far predates these technologically challenged, academically claimed cultures is also strongly supported by architectural evidence found elsewhere on Earth, sharing unmistakable, compelling characteristics with other well-known ancient structures we have previously covered, which we postulated, due to the great antiquity of the structures, were undoubtedly surviving relics of a now-lost pre-Diluvian civilization. It is unquestionably an enigmatic structure, with its most unusual and also recognizable feature being the mysterious, almost unique shape of its stonework. However, most intriguingly, this uniquely shaped stonework is a feature also found within the fortress of Nimrod, located upon the southern slopes of Mount Hermit, located an impressive 1,300 miles away. We find the chances of this extremely unusual type of masonry, 
being made and subsequently used on these separate structures, a mere coincidence, highly unlikely. It is far more likely, regardless of the extreme distance between the structures, that they were, in fact, built by the same people, a group of highly capable constructors, currently ignored by academia. We find it to be a far more likely, logical hypothesis that this mysterious group built the Royal Kurgan for an as yet unexplained purpose, using stone shaping methods unique to them. Furthermore, as covered previously, just like Nimrod Fortress, located by New Earth Channel, there is yet another ruin built with these same easily identifiable blocks, found within the oldest foundations of the ancient ruins of Jerash in Jordan. This lost civilization's unique finish to their stonework, incorporated into each build, fortunately makes connecting these builds to the same constructors seemingly undeniable. And due to the fact that the fortress of Nimrod and Jerash alike feature this stonework at foundation level, officially recognized as the oldest portions of both sites, we can logically presume that the Royal Kurgan not only shares the same constructor, but also likely shares the same tremendous antiquity. What's more, due to the sheer size of some of the stones utilized within Nimrod, indicates that it is existing work, created using lost knowledge, thus built by a lost civilization. Who built the Royal Kurgan within eastern Crimea? The surviving foundation at Jerash in Jordan? Or, indeed, the original structure found at Nimrod's castle? Were these structures built by the same, once highly capable, highly advanced ancient civilization? If not, why do they share such an unusual, unique style of stonework? What was the Royal Kurgan built for? When was it built? We find its enigmatic shape, construction technique, and indeed, seemingly identical stone characteristics, linking it to the other ruins of tremendous antiquity, each located thousands of miles apart. Highly compelling. Elongated skulls, along with their origins, are undoubtedly one of the most heavily debated areas within modern archaeology. Many independently funded researchers who have explored and subsequently exposed vast arrays of unusual and as yet inexplicable features surrounding a particularly few examples of these intriguing and incredibly puzzling artifacts. For regardless of known head-binding practices, a well-studied and historically an extremely common practice, thus one which modern science has an extensive understanding of, including the effect this had on the shape of the skull, makes any skull which endured these traditions are easily to identify post-mortem. The most commonly found incorporated wooden boards pressed upon the head, creating large, flat areas along the frontal lobes. Pressing the brow area of the skull upward, this malformation creates a crease or bulge near the normal napping areas of the skull, as seen in these photos of remains currently claimed as a suspected alien found in Croatia. Yet due to this knowledge of malformation, we can easily identify that it is indeed of a homo sapien. This so-called crease is easily identifiable upon bone structure. However, as previously mentioned, there exists a particular few whose remains not only have an elongated cranium, but the individuals in which they belong not only possess said craniums undeniably formed via natural processes but are identical in appearance to millions of witness testimonies describing what we all now know as the greys. With huge eyes, long, wide craniums, frames of a tiny stature, and micro-thin pelvis, remains of tiny humanoids, possibly visitors to our planet, who may have crashed here, subsequently marooned upon our planet, is an account which has been told before. We have in the past explored the compelling story surrounding the Dropa Discs, an ancient upar that, according to a number of individuals who have examined and tested them, tell this exact tale. Long barrows, granges, earthworks, and henges found across the United Kingdom all have rumors surrounding long-headed skulls being covered up 
after having been found at the sites. Passionately protected from trespassers, a vast number of the largest barrows have never been opened. 12-ton stones blocking the entrances, clearly suggesting they are buildings of tremendous importance, but without enormous multi-million pound machinery, permits, and most importantly, permission from the landowners, conveniently, all these incredible undug sites are set on private lands. We will probably never find what's inside, but many rumors abound, like those which circle Bella's nap, tales which tell of more elongated skulls exhumed from the surrounding Earth during a normal archaeological exploration. Yet regardless of this seemingly meticulous suppression in the UK, an incredible find has nonetheless been unearthed in Crimea. Many of the intriguing features of the remains are the same characteristics which gave rise to the elongated skulls of Peru's popularity. Yet this skull still possesses its tiny, complete skeleton. The eye sockets, which once housed the creature's eyes, were enormous, and although the entire frame of the creature is of a small size, the lack of a pronounced pelvis would have made them very slender and would have emphasized the size of the cranium. It is a strong candidate for the only complete elongated skull remains in existence. We find the elongated skull highly compelling. During our extensive research into the Neolithic Age, explorations into the countless Stone Age ruins, which can be found all over the world, a hypothesis began to form regarding their past possible identity. However, evidence continues to mount suggesting that this was incorrect. Stone Age ruins like that of Stonehenge are all part of an existing legacy of a civilization which, according to mainstream paradigm, lived over 10 millennia ago. A people who displayed incredible capabilities, not only in the quarrying, moving, and eventual placement of many stones in excess of 100 tons. The incredible displays of earthworking, mounds and barrows formed from thousands of tons of earth, all of which was once laid atop these underground layers. All of these remarkable features are indicative of a group who were once bestowed with tremendous capabilities. Research provided by various specialist fields, alignments displaying a past, intimate knowledge of solar processions, so complex, we have only very recently been able to fully understand just how astonishing their accuracy was. For Avebury within the UK holds Neolithic lunar alignments, found to be precise down to the fifth decimal. MH felt that due to the seemingly primitive nature of many Neolithic stone buildings that, although this ancient people clearly displayed incredible abilities, their structures on the surface, however, also appear not as advanced as many other enigmatic ancient builders. Due to this, we presented a thesis that the Neolithic people were a surviving fragments of a once far more capable yet now lost civilization. We theorized that these groups, scattered across the earth, still possessed the knowledge to move said stones, yet had lost advanced technology. We have instead unearthed fitting historical details to support another, more intriguing theory. We found that many Neolithic sites clearly constructed over extended periods of time, share uncanny similarities in their constructions to other ruins located on other continents, even displaying a somewhat deliberate, intended use of rough, uncarved stones. And the Great Salbic Kurgan is no exception. An enormous Neolithic barrow found within modern-day Siberia, although locally known as a Kurgan, this barrow, just like that of the Flintstone-esque dolmens, also found across the world, is virtually identical to New Grange, a winter solstice-aligned barrow we have previously discussed in several videos. Thus, with this mounting, collaborative evidence, MH's hypothesis of Neoliths, having once been surviving groups of a post-cataclysmic world, has all but been proven wrong, and they were instead the work of a once-flourishing, globe-trotting civilization. It would appear that these ancient monuments were built by a once prospering, worldwide society. And just like that of the pyramids of Giza, ancient Peru, Lebanon, China, along with countless others, were all constructed by past world-conquering superpowers, who fortunately left their proverbial fingerprints all over their particular sites, with the so-claimed Neolithic Age now found to be no exception to this rule. Who were the Neoliths? 
How are we supposed to believe the claim that these astonishing structures were somehow created by people wielding nothing but flints and whom never made contact? How did this group align their monuments so accurately? And perhaps most important of all, what were these structures original purposes? It is imperative that we continue to unravel that which has been successfully withheld from us for too long. It is a pursuit which we find highly compelling.